Suikoden series of role-playing games has enjoyed a sort of cult popularity over the years, telling the tales of nations at war and heroes both mighty and humble. Following in the wake of the high-profile Suikoden 3, Suikoden 4 unfortunately doesn't quite measure up to its predecessors. The game takes the series formula and alters it somewhat, reducing the number of allies in your party, adding a new ship, travel, and combat system, and doing away with Suikoden 3's storytelling through multiple main characters. While the game keeps a nice cast of characters and a good narrative, the added tedium present in some of the new elements will likely restrict Suikoden 4 to the series' most hardcore fans. A major attraction of the Suikoden series to fans has been the large and fairly diverse cast of characters that you can recruit to your cause, the 108 Stars of Destiny. Suikoden 4 doesn't disappoint in this regard, as you'll make friends out of pirates and ninjas, knights and magicians, aspiring journalists, mermaids, cat people, shopkeepers, and the requisite handful of lazy bums who have nothing better to do than to join up with you. While obviously you don't get a lot of in-depth background on the vast majority of these characters, chatting with them tends to drop you some interesting tidbits, and just like in Suikoden 3, there's even an in-game system for them to send you short mail messages. It's fun just meeting characters as you go along, knowing that you'll eventually be able to win them to your cause, while wondering what you might have to do to eventually entice them to join you. One of the most frustrating things about Suikoden 4 is trying to actually get anywhere. Since the game takes place across a series of islands separated by wide expanses of ocean, you'll be spending a lot of time on ships traveling hither and yon. These trips take up a disproportionate amount of playtime and will start to wear on your nerves pretty quickly. That's because the ships you control, regardless of size or build, all move abysmally slowly. They creep across the ocean at a snail's pace, and instead of making the world seem vast, it makes you wonder about what kind of crazy viscosity the Suikoden seawater has. The ships also handle rather badly. They don't like to turn, and trying to navigate around narrow channels to get to some ports is a real pain. Also, islands have an invisible barrier around them, so if you sail too close, you can suddenly find yourself forcibly turned nearly 90 degrees and pushed back out to sea, which is extremely irritating if you're just about to dock in a port it took you 30 minutes to reach. Most of your journeys are across featureless leagues of water, too, so it's not like you get to take in the scenery as you crawl along. It's just water as far as the eye can see and your ship moving almost imperceptibly. Sailing is no fun. Random battles are nothing new to Japanese RPGs, but battles in this game are so frequent you'll find yourself meeting a new group of monsters every few steps or every few seconds of sailing. Whether on foot or on a ship, you're not moving very briskly to begin with, so getting interrupted ridiculously frequently by fights while you're struggling to get from place to place gets old pretty fast. It's especially bad when you're on your boat, though, where trying to do something as simple as just turning your boat around 180 degrees ends up taking several minutes because you get thrown into battle twice. While not as in-depth or as tightly scripted as Suikoden 3 was, Suikoden 4 still offers up a pretty interesting tale that does well to keep you hooked despite some of the game's annoyances. The main character in Suikoden games usually ends up with a rare magical artifact, one of the 27 true runes grafted to a part of his or her body. In this case, it's a particularly nasty rune. The rune of punishment is a deadly parasite that drains the life of whoever uses it. Once its host dies, the rune seeks out another person nearby to repeat the cycle anew. You're unlucky enough to get drawn into this miserable cycle, and the result is the gradual revelation of the rune's dark past set against a nice backdrop of war. So things are at least kept interesting. One of the biggest changes Suikoden 4 makes to the series' formula is with its battles. Instead of the traditional six-person party that the series has always featured, in this game you have only four party members. Shrinking the size of your party simplifies battle somewhat, but that's not necessarily all that desirable in a series that's always focused on factions at war. Your party always seemed like compact squadrons instead of roaming adventurers. This also means that, many, that the many combo attacks, where two or more characters join in a single strike, are necessarily reduced in number and frequency, which also takes away from the experience. Longtime fans of the Suikoden series will appreciate Suikoden 4 for the series conventions that it keeps. However, even those fans will have to contend with the tedious ship travel and high enemy encounter rate, running through a tale that's not quite as deep as previous installments. Fervent RPG and Suikoden fans will enjoy this game if they can summon the patience, but anyone lukewarm about this title should consider just leaving it on the shelf.